Okay, now that we finished the first, second and the third steps, and we should focus on the fourth step, which is the including an electric load center that's handling the interaction between the solar PVA and DC to AC inverter equipment. So we finished our job with solar collector load. Let's go back to the building level. Okay. And just in the middle in the navigation screen, you can just select generation tab. Okay. Click on the generation tab and check the include electric load centers from the checkbox. So you can select the total number of electric load centers from one to five. For example, you can select two as two load centers with two different inverters will be modeled and connected to the two different PV array types. Say one of them is rooftop PV array and the other type can be for shading type PV array. And in my case, I have only one PV array, a collection of five different PV modules. So one PV array, one inverter. So I will just select a single inverter. And by default, DC with inverter load center template is assigned. When I click on the template, I see the library. You can <clears throat> create a copy of this and change it. Just copy and paste and rename or create your custom load center. Suppose that you prefer to create your own custom load center. Just uh, add new item. Okay, and then there's a new item coming in. So you can say my inverter model, whatever it is, the name doesn't matter. You will choose the operation scheme as the base load. You should choose electrical bus type as direct current with inverter type 3. Okay, this is very important. For the inverter input section, now there is an example inverter as simple as defined. Again, this is a library component and you can create your own inverter model. Just you can select one of them, adjust and rename and recreate or you can create from scratch an inverter model. In this assignment, we will only use simple inverter model types. So on the inverter objects, I can say give a name my inverters new okay and then we will keep all the things the same no change it's a simple inverter type available the schedule is 24 7 on all the time and inverter efficiency again you will define a constant unchanged inverter efficiency say 0.96 but again in the assignment it's also also it's already provided to you in the assignment handout. So you don't need to find out some specific inverter manufacturer's data and translate this specific information to design build information model types. No such thing. In fact, there are more than that. You can use lookup tables. You can find functional power from manufacturers again. That's possible, doable, but you are not going to go to that path in this study. So and again, you can ignore the other input and it's say okay we created an inverter right my new inverter and click double click on it and it is assigned my inverter new is assigned uh, to my electric load center the cost you can again ignore the cost section of the electrical load center in this dialog box Next job is defining a generator list. Here the generators are the solar PV array. So at the top ribbon, just select the second one, generator list. And then next job is the assign. Now number of generators, how many arrays you have, okay? In my geometry, for example, I have only single array, but you may go up to 30, scroll down, you can go up to 30 different arrays in the single generator list. That's why it's a limitation. That's why we didn't draw individual PV modules one by one. 
Otherwise, maybe we will end up 50, 60 generators and we don't have space to do that. And it's not logical. So you just keep it within manageable level by grouping them together and defining as a separate PV array. So I have only one array. So I will choose number of generators as a single type. DC generator type is photovoltaic. No problem. That's obvious. But then click on the empty area just right to the PV solar collector section and click on the three dots and you see a new dialog box pop up and now it's a selection box so we will see a list of PV arrays surfaces drawn up to now and in the design builders graphical interface and we have a chance to select so select the collector name this is the PV array and hit OK and this will be included into your generator list. Again, this list may be more than one. So as you have more, you will select more and more surfaces should be selected. But here I don't have enough surfaces to select. So I should go back and choose the only one as the photovoltaic solar collector in the generator list. So I created the generator list. In the general, I created a new inverter model. It's a base load. You should pay utmost attention to electrical bus type. Should be three because we have a direct current with inverter. We have a DC to AC inverter. Again, a library. We are not using the function of power, not lookup table, just using simple. I have many different types, but you can create your own and give it a constant conversion efficiency and it's given in the handout and you can ignore the cost data. We are not going for economical analysis here say ok and this is generated load template with all the inverters say yes it's double click and my inverter model is selected basically you created an element and then you go back and double click for the assignment so load center one my inverter model again load centers may be multiple than that more than that as much as you have but not that much we can only have five different load centers which so this indicates a point okay you should group things together you should lump the geometry differentiate between different types but you should collect them under the same load center and each load center is connected to a single inverter but you can use the same inverter for the rooftop same type of inverter for the rooftop system versus the shading type uh, PV system in your studies. So, okay, it's included, done. And in the layout, again, I can also click on the bottom ribbon. I can click on the visualize and just see the rendering of the building. And I can show shadows and everything and say, I can rotate this in orbit and see my PV geometry. This is another way of interaction with the model. Let's go back to edit and in the building. So now we are at the fifth step, annual performance simulation and getting the results. Just you know, to perform an annual simulation as you normally do for other energy performance analysis, just go and simulation, just wait a little bit. And then my panel pops up and from start date to end date, so we need annual simulation, please pay attention. So it should be from January 1st up to December 31st. And you don't need to select daily, so I normally uncheck this hourly, sub-hourly, daily options. I will just go with the monthly and annual and go to output. In the output uh, options, uh, let me see. In the output options, just go back to summary tables. It should be kilowatt hours. Please pay attention to this. And reports, monthly reports, please check. Annual reports. Yeah, not the monthly, but I don't want to see the monthly. But check the annual all summary. Here it is. It's already checked, so no need. If yours is unchecked, please check all summary and make sure that every all types of simulation outputs are created. And say OK. And then simulation begins and simulation times changes from project to another project. And for me, it could be really fast uh, in a way. 
uh, for the simulation for your actual building case it may take more and more time depending on the model complexity that's normal but we should wait till the end of the simulation to see the results uh, to see how this uh, PV performance data can be obtained from Energy Plus outputs. Basically, we will use Energy Plus table based outputs, which is HTML format. So, I don't want to run no daily simulations, no, and say summary. This is my table. This is the famous, most commonly used Energy Plus HTML type table is seen here. And I will scroll down there a little bit. Yes, I should come to this table. Electric load satisfied. So we have the electricity in terms of kilowatt hours. I have the percent electricity in terms of percentage. And here I have the photovoltaic power. Okay. Photovoltaic power annual energy generation is about 685 kilowatt hours. It is satisfying about only 1%, around 1% of the electricity consumption of this small building case so this is how you get the total electricity consumption data from the energy plus outputs okay so we run the simulation we get the results from energy plus outputs and this is everything related with the solar pv modeling in in uh, the using design builder functions and I hope this will be helpful for your simulation studies. So with this, we come to the very end of our tutorial. Thank you for listening and attention.